Hello friends, in this video lecture we are going to discuss power poles which is very important term regarding the operation of interconnected system. So let us begin. See friends, till now we have got the idea of interconnected system, interchange between the interconnected system okay various types of the interchange we have also discussed so now in this lecture let us understand what is power pole it is very important term uh, to understand the operation of an interconnected systems okay see interchange of the power between system can be economically advantageous and has been demonstrated previously we have seen if there is an interconnection or if there is an interchange of the power between the systems it leads to some economical advantages okay again when the system is interconnected with many neighbors okay the process of setting up one transaction at a time with each neighbor can become very time consuming and will rarely result in optimum production cost okay suppose if number of neighboring systems are there okay and we have interconnection with all the neighbors then in that case the process of setting one transaction at a time it become very difficult okay and again it becomes very time consuming okay and that way the optimum production cost will result in very rare cases okay in very rare cases we could have the optimum production cost now to overcome this burden what we can have is several utilities may form a power pool okay that incorporate as a central dispatch office okay so different utilities they can form a power pool and that power pool will incorporate or it will act as a central dispatch office again this power pool is administered from the central location uh, that has a responsibility for setting up interchange between members as well as other administrative tasks. Okay, so this power pool, what it has to do, it has responsibility for setting up the interchange between the members. Okay, and some other administrative task will be given to this. Uh, power pool okay the pool member relinquish certain responsibility to the pool operating office okay they give up some responsibility of them to the pool operating office in return for greater economics in the operation okay for this reason they give up some responsibilities of them to the pool operating office again the agreement of the pool member sign is usually very complex okay because you we can understand easily here let's say we are having let us consider a very simple system okay let's say we are having this type of the system okay and we are having the, the interconnection okay this way let's say this type of interconnection we are having now we need to set up one operation at a time okay let's say i want to exchange or import the power to this particular system from all the neighboring states so that can be one operation okay again i want to have one more operation okay that can be different based on the situation now the settling time of one operation can be very big okay so this way this can lead to an ineconomical total production cost okay so that way i want my system to be operated in an interconnected manner again i want to get the economy as well i want to have some economical benefits as well so in that way the operation of such system it becomes very complex okay and that operation is been taken care by the pool okay energy pool office okay so that is why as we said that it is a very complex process okay the complexity arises 
because the members of the pool are attempting to gain greater benefit from the pool operation and to allocate this benefit equitably among the members okay because all the members which are uh, participate in the pool everyone wants to gain greater benefit okay so that in that sense the complexity is arising okay because everyone wants to uh, have their work done earlier okay by that way they can gain some uh, economical benefits so as everyone is demanding for the same so in that situation it leads to the complexity of the whole system okay in addition to maximizing the economic benefits of the interchange between the pool members the pools okay the energy pool help member companies how it help okay how those uh, participating members can maximize their economic benefit or see how the pool is helping them the pool help the companies by coordinating the unit commitment okay see basically the unit commitment it is done uh, by the individual utilities okay uh, the utility is responsible for doing uh, this unit commitment for that particular uh, its own area but when they comes in the pool the pool what it do it coordinate the unit commitment for all the utilities which are there in that pool okay that is one way by which we can maximize the economic benefit another maintenance scheduling that can be done considering all the utilities okay and to do that uh, to coordinate that maintenance scheduling the pool is helping okay so in that way the economic benefits can be maximized again providing a centralized assessment of system security at the pool office calculating the better hydro schedules for the member companies and so on that way uh, the pool is helping the participating utilities to maximize uh, their economic benefits okay the pool provide increased reliability by allowing member to draw energy from the pool transmission grid during emergencies as well as covering each other's reserve when units are drawn for maintenance or on forced outage okay the pool is not just helping in coordinating the unit commitment scheduling okay providing the centralized assessment for the system security again calculating the better hydro uh, scheduling that is one thing what another thing that pool is uh, offering to the participating utilities is that during the emergency situation the pool is helping the utility where the emergency has occurred okay uh, it is providing some help uh, in during the emergency for such utilities again uh, let's say when there is a forced outage or when there is a plants are down for the maintenance installed capacity goes down okay in that case we have already discussed that at every time we need to make sure that or we need to ensure that the total install capacity should be equal or it should be more than the predicted peak load as well as the reserve so if suppose if we are not able to meet that condition because of the some generators are down for the maintenance or if suppose if there is a force outage is there then in that case the pool will help okay it will give the access to the pool transmission grid okay by that way uh, that install capacity problem that can be solved okay with the help of that uh, pool again some of the difficulties in setting up the power pool involving non affiliated companies or system arises because member companies are independently owned and for the most part independently operated okay again therefore one cannot just make the assumption that pool is exactly the same entity as the system under one ownership okay now see in the pool we may have multiple entities okay and all those entities are operating independently okay so that is one thing the problem with the pool okay with the energy pool okay 
again if one member's transmission system is heavily loaded with power flow that chiefly benefit that member's neighbors okay then the system that owns the transmission is entitled to reimbursement for the use of the transmission facilities okay suppose if one member's transmission system is heavily loaded with power flow that mainly benefit that member's neighbor okay then see again let's understand this thing with one example let's say this is system one this is utility two and let's have utility three somewhere okay now if suppose uh, to deliver the things or having the interconnection between these uh, system okay now if suppose the transmission network of area 2 if it is heavily loaded okay with power flow which is providing the benefit to the neighbors okay the heavy loading or the overloading of the transmission system of area 2 is giving or providing benefit to the neighbor system so in that case what the pull agreement says these two members should reimburse or the system 2 is entitled to the reimbursement for the use of the transmission facility because they have made the benefit by using the transmission network of this network okay of this system so this is how the pool is helping again if one member is directed to commit a unit to cover reserve deficiency in the neighboring system okay again we can see the same thing okay if there is a deficiency of the reserve in the area 3 and for the same time if the pool asks the area uh, to commit certain unit so in that case the area 2 it will again get entitled for the reimbursement for this act okay so this way the pool is helping by coordinating the operation between these areas these reimbursement arrangement are built into the uh, agreement that the members sign when forming the pool okay so this type of the reimbursement agreements are built and the these agreements are signed by the members who are going to form the pool the more members try to push for maximum economic operation the more complicated such agreement become okay because everyone want to have benefit from that pool so that way uh, the complexity uh, increases nevertheless the saving obtainable are quite significant and have led many interconnected utility system throughout the world to form centrally dispatched power pools when feasible okay so here are the some advantages of having the centrally dispatched power pools uh, it minimizes the operating cost the performance of the system okay or what we can say the system wide unit commitment is one of the factor that can minimize again the operating cost uh, that is the advantage of having the uh, power pool again minimize the reserve being carried out throughout the system again the coordinate maintenance scheduling to minimize the cost and maximize reliability by sharing the reserve during maintenance period it is possible it is the advantage of the power pool again maximize the benefit of emergency procedure that is also one of the advantage of power pool again there are disadvantages that must be weighed against this operating and economic advantages we should discuss some disadvantages as well although it is generally true that power pools with centrally dispatch offices will reduce overall operating cost but you see that some of the individual utility may perceive the pool requirement and disciplines as disadvantages in what sense they are perceiving this pool requirement and disciplines as disadvantage so some factors are cited here see the complexity of the pool agreement and continuing cost of supporting the interutility structure required to manage and administer the pool that is the one disadvantage okay 
see the agreement is very complex here again you need to provide some continuity cost supporting uh, cost of having that uh, whole office okay again you need to have some administrator who look after those uh, pool okay the operating and the investment cost associated with the central dispatch office and needed communication and computational facility the relinquishing of the right to engage in independent transaction outside the pool by the individual company to the pool office and the requirement that any outside transaction be priced on the split saving basis based on the pool members cost that is one of the disadvantage of having that uh, pool operation or the energy pools the additional complexity that may result in dealing with the regulatory agencies if the pool operate in more than one state okay because every state is having its own uh, regulating agency okay like in maharashtra we are having merc maharashtra state electricity regulating commission so the, likewise the all the states will have their own regulatory commission okay suppose if the pool is made up of uh, utilities of different states so in that case uh, it becomes difficult uh, that already we are having the complex agreement of the pool again it uh, add to the complexity of the agreement of the pool again uh, the filling on the part of the management of some utility that the pool structure is displacing some of an individual system management responsibility and restricting some of the freedom of independent action possible to serve the need of its own customers okay that is again the disadvantage of having this power pool or energy pool okay the power pool without central dispatch center can be administrator through a central office that simply acts as a brokerage house to arrange transaction amongst the member okay suppose the power pool without central dispatch control but it is having the central administrator office it is simply acts as a brokerage house which arranges transaction amongst the members of the pool okay in opposite extreme the pool can have fully staffed central office with real time data telemetered uh, to the central computers that calculate the best pool wide economic dispatch and provide control signal to the member companies that is possible when the pool office is fully staffed okay by far the most difficult task of the pool operation is to decide who will pay what to whom for all the economic transaction and special reimbursement built into the pool agreement okay that is the most difficult task of this uh, power pool okay so this is how the power pool operations or the agreements are done when the utilities forms the power pool okay thank you very much